You're probably thinking, my boyfriend said this was a superhero movie, but that guy in the red suit just turned that other guy into a f***ing kebab. Well, I may be super, but I'm no hero. And yeah, technically this is a murder, but some of the best love stories start with a murder. And that's exactly what this is. Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. And to tell it right, I gotta take you back long before Lou squeezed his ass into red spandex. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond. Today on Thrive Loud, we have a dynamic coach, inspirational author, and highly sought after trainer and motivational speaker. She is the founder of Women of Impact, a community and movement of amazing women who are ready to change the world and, in the process, take their business, career, and life to a whole new level. And that's what we love doing on Thrive Loud, so I'm going to love this conversation. She is also the author of Ignite Your Life, Thrive Loud listeners, Andrea Wolf. Andrea, how are you today? I am doing great. and so excited to be here, Lou. Thank you. How are you? I had the pleasure of sitting at the same table for several hours with Andrea and was enchanted by her British accent, her lovely <laughs> smile and her charm and her focus really, really driven on how she's able to help women thrive in their businesses, careers, and lives, which we love to do here on Thrive Loud, those that thrive in their lives, their businesses, and their passions. So this was a natural connection, and I love these type of people, Thrive Loud listeners. They always get, my, get me going here. So what I want to jump right into is what you're focusing on right now. What is the hot button in the work that you do? Let's get our listeners up to speed into what you've been mostly focusing on today. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so I've been a coach for over 25 years, loving absolutely every minute of it. It was truly finding the glove that fit me, what I'm here on the planet to do, uh, which was total blessing. And um, so, it was, and before that, I was in the very large multinational corporate world, and before that, in various businesses. So, um, I just, in the whole time, through all of my professional experience before becoming a coach, and especially since, I've become very aware of one thing, and that's what led me to create Women of Impact. And that is that women are playing at half mass for the most part in the business world, especially in the business world. But actually, since I say everything's connected, it actually, you know, like the hip bone to the thigh bone, we know it about the human body. Um, but this is true in life as well, in business and in life, that everything's connected. So, um, so to give you a couple of ideas of what I'm talking about, um, and this is how I came up with the five keys of impact. Um, I've coached like, probably hundreds, if not thousands of women by now, and uh, often they are executives and or business owners, which is who Women of Impact is here to serve. And um, this is about, you know, like not really fully shining in the world. Um, so if I may just share the five keys of impact. because Yeah, I, I would love that. Demonstrate yeah. it. Um, so the first one is all about presence. Like literally how you show up, how you walk into a room, how you be in meetings, how you, um, how you lead, and how you also, if you're an executive, like senior, senior executives I've coached have, you know, like held back and um, sort of played the game rather like a man, which isn't authentic and doesn't work anyway. So presence, like how you energetically show up. Um, and this can really be in very meaningful ways. So, for example, when it's coming to th that time for the annual review and women like hesitate to actually make a case for themselves, like all of the amazingness that they've generated during the year, they don't speak up about it. And they're just sort of pining and waiting to be noticed. <laughs> so, of course, you as an incredible, powerful man probably understand very well. This is a non-issue for most men. But it's very big for women. So presence is everything. Um, I like to call it sort of glowing at night, you know. Um, <laughs> like the, the firefly effect. I think I like that. Energy so. where you get noticed just by being in a space, right? The second thing is voice. Actually using your voice. Now, this is an interesting one because often when women 
women get confused about and they act as if they have to like again sound and be like men but often then that gets misinterpreted as like for example labels like shrill or she must be angry hmm. um and, and so it's a very fine line um I, in fact, did actually attempt to get to Hillary Clinton when she was running because she was forgetting to speak to one person, actually right. connect. Yep. And it was making me crazy. I came close, but it didn't quite work. Um, so, you know, just finding that way of being authentic, being really true to yourself and uh, glowing in the dark in all humility, because women are, like have a thing about not being selfish, not being dominant. Um, and slapping all these labels all over themselves, which complicates everything. Um, so clarity is another one, being very clear in your speaking, meaning what you're saying, having um, the, the next one's passion, having passion behind what you're speaking. And the last one is authenticity, really what I call leadership, like the, the women's way. And it's very different for us to be really powerful. It's our hearts are open because when we're exuding that power, that feminine power, uh, it's irresistible. It's mm. not criticized. So that gives you some idea of what I'm up to, uh, to really help change everything for women executives and women entrepreneurs. I've got a whole bunch of questions here, but let's just recap this so I have this correct. So we had presence, we have voice. What were the other three? Just so we have clarity, clarity passion, clarity. and authenticity. Okay. I was trying to see if we could come up with a good word for that or an acronym. But anyway. Uh, I have a good question for you because this, I'm going to just throw back all the rules of what I normally interview when I ask this question. You have coached hundreds, if not thousands of people in your career, correct? Absolutely, yes. You have, men, co- men yeah, I was say, you have coached men and women. Yes. Is there a different tactic in coaching either one of them? And I'm really, meaning, is there a different tactic on the way you're going to coach a woman versus the way that you're going to coach a man? Obviously, there's, there's rules of coaching that you have studied and have perfected over the years. And obviously, there's probably some methodology. But have you found that you do something different in the way that you coach these genders? Well, I'm going to answer your question, um, not with just yes or no, okay? Fair so, enough. Um, <clears throat> this is a podcast. <laughs> you, may, you may have noticed. Yes. Yeah, you may have noticed that we we're wired differently, right? We have different body parts, and we're actually wired differently, men and women. And not only one way all men and one way all women. So what you asked me is a very big question, which I love. By the way, I love big questions. Um, and uh, so how I how I coach. Yes, I have my systems and processes I take people through. But really, I truly, truly, truly coach organically with what I know. I Because I am a very, um, so I don't give psychic readings, but I, I'm very intuitive coach. I hear what's not being said. Uh, part of my hearing loss actually really enhanced that, that gift. Mm. In, so I, I coach people where they are. And how, once I know where they want to get, and we do this all by process, right? Um, Is then I coach them in ways that I know are going to help them get there the quickest. So, uh, you know, I have sayings all the time, like suffering is optional. So, you know, we don't necessarily like wade too deeply back into the past, although understanding it is important, but really I help them come to the present to create the future of their dreams. Now, is that identical with men and women? No. And I'll give you an example of this. Um, um, The reason I call myself business and personal coach, because, you know, that uh, life coach, the new the new phrase is a bit touchy feely for most corporate uh, business. Um, And uh, and and really, I think it says it better. So men, for example, typically. So how I coach is usually it is business that attracts people to me. Most of us coaches are magnets for perfect clients. So um, often that's the catalyst for seeking me out, finding me, like our paths crossing. And um, I always, if I'm coaching one-on-one and including when I'm coaching teams, I have everyone put at least one thing on the personal side of things into the mix as well. So whatever they're seeing and learning and like ways of going about things to actually also have some dreams on the personal side as well. 
Now, gotcha. men, this is the difference between men and women. Women embrace this like immediately, right? They understand that it's connected, right? And it's in 10 seconds. Men will often fight me on this because they're hiring me to like either like sort out the chaos that's in their business or sort out team members or problem children or um, like grow the business, right? That's a, a common one right? Take their business a whole new level in the new year. So, um, and then I say, okay, so what's the personal from our initial intake session? It's all very clear, like where they're at in their life and how they feel about it. Um, and they go, no, 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 Andrew, we're only focusing on business and they will fight me on this. Hmm. And I help them understand, like, can you remember the last time you had a fight with your wife before you went into the office? Right. And some, something like that. And they go, yes, of course. And how did that go? It was fine. Nobody noticed. And this is how men are wired, right? They think uh, they can sort of hide it. And um, actually what happens when you walk into the office, having had a fight with your wife right before is actually people will feel it as you come in. That's your presence. And that's, and that's actually demonstrating the presence that you have in the, in the moment, because obviously exactly. they're we, living in that presence of what's going on in their personal life. We're bouncing up against each other all the time, positively or negatively all the time. And so, you know, it, it's all connected and it often takes, so we'll start with business. I don't like force them into anything. I don't do that. I don't inflict myself on anyone. Um, but, you know, gradually they get to see it. Like when, um, no, no, we're not talking about that. We're only focusing on business. And then it keeps popping up anyway. And so I say, okay, now can we go there? So it's, it's very interesting. Um, how I coach is, is truly in ways that best serve each client in that moment. Okay. Right? So, na- so, so now I'm going to take the follow-up question to yes. this because this is interesting. Yes. Obviously, you have recognized that there is a difference in a little bit on the way that you, uh, you might be coaching them generally the same, but there is sort of a difference between the way that you're coaching men and women. And yet you have a speciality and an expertise and you have a founder of Women Impact Group because there seems to be more of a need in the leadership area based on what you've been seeing of women that need a lot of the magic that you provide. Oh my God. Wait. That probably is the understatement of the century. So let me finish the question. But here's the question. Even though there's the understatement of the century and that is more of the case where it is, do you prefer coaching the women or prefer coaching men? Okay. I got you thinking on this podcast, Andrew. Our listeners are going, what is (laughs) this doing? My general idea here is this, and this is the thing because there, there, there's two sides to this, right? You're saying there's a need, which we totally understand for women, and, and, and just to your point, that women need a lot of the magic that you have. But that might not, 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 that might not necessarily be what you love doing more. And that's why I'm curious. Maybe our listeners might be too. Well, so I love absolutely everybody I have ever and I'm currently working with. I'm all in when I'm your coach. And so it's not about gender. It isn't about gender. And the reason that I created Women of Impact is, is big vision, big vision. So I, uh, may I share it? Absolutely. Great. So this is the catalyst. It's, and that's the reason I'm really passionate about working with women right now. Um, so my big vision is this. I believe in the possibility of world peace. It's all about world peace. And in the same breath, what I know it will take to shift what I call the global conversation, which is extremely masculine right now. I mean, extremely masculine, as you can see what's going on all over the world. And so the only way we're going to get there is when there is a slight rebalancing or a mighty rebalancing, which means more women finding their voice, standing up and shining in the world, and uh, bringing the gifts that us women have to bring to the world, which really will connect us more, which really will, you know, dot, dot, dot. Uh, There'll be lots of big dots in between this and there, but bring about world peace. So the only way, right, to really create really powerful, powerful teams is to have women in them, right? And even better when you have a woman leading, Women, an enlightened woman who understands what effective, um, empowering leadership is, um, and it's inclusive. So, so this, so the reason I came up with this, Women of Impact, 
Um, I am dreaming down the line of a men of impact too. I'm just starting with women and kids. Get that. Imagine kids getting this really young, this stuff about, you know, not comparing yourself to others and standing up and shining and also embracing other people shining too around you. No. Andrew, yeah, no, I, I totally get it. And Andrew, by the way, I want, I want to thank you for letting me go down this line of questioning because my general thought, and this is my own opinion, is that to your point that everything is connected, mm-hmm. the connection between the two issues and the challenges that women are facing, you're only going to be a better coach if you're, you can only coach women better if you're getting a continuous perspective of what's going on with men. And women will only, who are working more and more with men in the workplace and vice versa, men working with more and more women, need to understand exactly the impact of each other in the work environment. So I've been a big fan of the more connected they can be and the way they can work together, need people like yourself who are dynamic coaches that have both perspectives and know and understand the gender differences and understand what changes might need to be made so that we're not having this conversation and there isn't a need for founder of women of impact because everybody is impactful in your world peace example globally. Totally. (laughs) Very very inspiring how you said it back. It's great. Perfect. <laughs> Andrea, I want to go and, and thank you for taking taking me down this way. You know, every now and then we like to mix it up. We're recording this right at the end of, of 2019 as we're, and, and you'll hear this in the beginning of 2020. I want our listeners to get an understanding a little bit more about you, Andrea. You know, because you've listened to this show, I love asking guests on this program when you're having an off day or you have a podcaster pressing you with questions in any direction he possibly can <laughs> and you have trouble thriving. Who or what practice do you seek to get back on the thriving track? Well, one of the ways I describe myself is a recovering, recovering perfectionist. And uh, I know exactly where I got it from. I got it from my amazing, whole, fully, fully blown perfectionist mother. Um, and so, I, um, so, so I'm a lifetime learner. I... I love learning, love growing. And I also strongly believe in walking my talk as a coach. If I say I believe in this, and I do passionately, um, you know, I'd better actually be, have at least one coach, if not more than one. So um, I have support structures that keep me mm. uh, from overthinking, overthinking myself into paralysis, which is what perfectionism can do, and to keep me moving forward. Um, both. Um, communities I'm in plural as well as you know coaches and so on so I I um, set myself up for success that way um, to you know to keep myself being uh, challenged and stretching and growing and moving forward I like it yeah question for you now let's have the fun part here Um, actually let's do the admin part of the show and then we'll get to fun street which I like to do can you share with all the listeners all the places people can learn about Andrea Wolf website social media everything we will put it all in the show notes however it always sounds better when they hear it from you awesome yeah so I'm on Facebook and so is Women Who Impact uh, LinkedIn and um, uh, Instagram and uh, what am I forgetting? Uh, my website is andreawolf.com. And um, I have a gift on there for everybody listening to, to help you like see where you're holding yourself back and, um, uh, you know, just sort of learn about yourself. It's a very good place to start as you like uh, create your vision for the next year. So if I may just share the link to that too. Yes, and we can put it in the show notes too. So tell us what that link is. Awesome. So it's, it's my website, andreawolf.com. That's with two O's, A-N-D-R-E-A-W-O-O-L for love, F for frank.com forward slash blueprint. Nice. And I, as with everything I do in, in what I do, uh, written or spoken or, you know, live, um, I take you by the hand, gently, gently exploring this area. So. Um, so it's fun and easy, always fun and easy. All right. Um, fun and easy. Oh, there's more. Oh, wait. Is there more? I was just thinking if there's anywhere else you can find me. Oh, um, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure. We'll put LinkedIn, Facebook, awesome. Instagram, Great. all that fun stuff. Wherever you are, we will let the listeners know. That's <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we will do that. Okay, Andrea. Yeah. 
now the fun stuff here. First of all, um, do you have an all-time favorite movie, which you actually put in the show notes here? I want to hear if this is still the case. Do you remember what you wrote? I did. Well, I, I had two. Oh, okay. um, you could share both. So one is Moonstruck, just because it just captured me from moment one to right through the end. It's, it's, it's wonderful, funny, dysfunctional family. It's, um, it's touching and inspiring by the end. You know, it's all things that I love. So, um, so Moonstruck's one of them. And then Under the Tuscan Sun is another personal favorite. Oh, great movie. Beautiful yeah. movie. Also great cinematography stuff and all that. that big yes, I, yes. Does Andrea Wolf have a favorite song that she likes to listen to? Ah, well, uh, the first time uh, my husband heard You Raise Me Up by Josh Groban, mm. he looked at me and he said, this is, this is all about you for me. And uh, my heart just melted. <laughs> so you raised me up. I like that. Mm-hmm. Andrea, looking in uh, to the year 2020, is there something, a big goal that you have, a thing that you're focused on for the upcoming year that, you're, that you'd love to share with the listeners or something that's on the tip of your tongue as you're thinking about big goals for Andrea Wolf? Well, there's a lot that's behind this, but it's a lovely, easy, clear one to say. So it's a thousand members in Women of Impact. Oh, that's easy. We like that. I think we'll hopefully get that from the show. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) Oh, Andrea, Andrea, first of all, thank you for being such a great sport, getting me to like press you a little bit into some of the challenges in, in, you know, the the two worlds and the two genders today. I think you're a great sport about it and also really provided a great important message on the direction and the differences that you need to. And I think our listeners appreciate that. And thank you so much for coming on the program today. Thank you. Thank you. I love a challenge. (laughs) <laughs> and you lived up to it. And thank you for joining us. And until next time, keep thriving on one and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. Snap out of it. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts and check us out on the web at thriveloud.com or Follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook at Thrive Loud.